Good morning and welcome to day four of our clean eating. How are you getting on? Now, today we're going to be talking about timings. We're going to be talking about fasting <laughs> and we're going to talk about snacking and pasta. Now, a few queries that came up in the group yesterday. Um, so some one of you was asking about how does pasta feature? Well, on during clean eating, you are reducing your carbohydrates, okay, and you're going for complex carbohydrates. So uh, you're going to be going for, if you, were, if you wanted to eat pasta, you would be having a small portion of wholemeal pasta as opposed to white, all right? So uh, that's, in this clean eating, we're trying to get rid of white processed stuff because there's no fiber in it. Um, good morning, Melanie. Um, so... And the answer to that question is you could have a small amount of pasta if you, if you needed it and you would ideally be choosing wholemeal, okay? Um, clean eating is particularly about focusing on plenty of protein and plenty of vegetables with some starchy carbohydrates, but not too many, all right? Um, okay, so I had a very interesting conversation yesterday in Pilates with some, some ladies who uh, were, we were talking about clean eating and we were talking about timings of meals, and we came to the conclusion that um, we are, we, I've said this all along, we are all individuals and it's not a one size fits all. Now there are people who are constantly hungry. Now that was me before I did clean eating last week. Eat all day, want to graze all the time, seem to feel constantly hungry. And actually for me, when I do intermittent fasting, I eat when I miss breakfast. I am so less hungry than when I've eaten breakfast. Like I think it was... Tuesday when I was teaching keep moving so I I always eat before leaving the house so I had two Weetabix and milk and then spent the next uh within a 90 minutes two hours max I was hungry and then of course I wasn't going to eat anymore until lunchtime so it's really bizarre some of us feel less hungry when we do fasting and some of us you know it's very very individual um so if you look at your sheet, it does say if you wanted to, you could do an intermittent fast on day four, which is today. So basically, every day we're suggesting you have a 12-hour break between your last meal. Hi, Tori. Your last meal, say last night, say for example, seven o'clock. Every night we then want to have 12 hours minimum before the next meal. So you wouldn't ideally be having your breakfast until 7 a.m. or however the times work for you. So that's that's clean eating routinely, all right? Um, a 12 hour gap between eating. It gives your body a rest. We don't need to be constantly grazing all the time. A lot of us have got into the habit of grazing, but actually our bodies don't need it and it prefers it when we don't. So routinely in clean eating, we want that 12 hour gap between our last meal and our next one. So those of you who want to try intermittent fasting, you basically just have lots of drinks during the morning and you have your first meal at lunchtime. Um, there was one, um, there was one lady yesterday who was saying, Emma, is it a problem if I never have breakfast? Because I'm genuinely never hungry and all I ever want to do is eat at 12 o'clock and in an evening meal. No, that's fine. If that's what suits you, that's fine. Now, I totally understand that we're all in different situations with our families. And obviously family meal times are, are really important. It's a time to chat and everything. So we're putting that aside for now. Uh, you guys are going to decide what you're doing. I'm in the lovely position of being an independent eater. Of course, we have family meal times, but we're all doing different things in our house at different times. Ken never eats breakfast. <laughs> he eats crazy types. He basically eats at lunchtime and then he has a late evening meal. And that's, that's his eating pattern. That fits around his work and that's what he does. So I'm not suggesting you abandon family time or anything, but I'm just getting you to think about is it appropriate for you in your setting, You'd, as long as you have no history of eating disorder and no history of needing tablets at a certain time that say take after food, all right? Or if you may be diabetic, that sort of thing. Those things aside, for the rest of us, it's something to consider. And it was such an eye-opener to me when I started doing it, because as I said to you, for the first few times I did it, I was not doing it. <laughs> That was fine. I am very, yeah, it takes quite a lot to change how I think about things. And then when I do them, I think, 
why did I take so long to try that? <laughs> so, um, I think it was Marion, darling Marion, said, well, I'm sure I would faint if I left the house without breakfast. Why don't you give it a go on a day you're at home? All right. So maybe if you're having a quiet Sunday at home, for example, um, just give it a go. I mean, we go for a dog walk. Um, so we would get up, go for a dog walk and then come home for brunch. And that is technically an intermittent fast, but we don't call it that. We just call it a dog walk and brunch. You know, you don't have to use those words, intermittent fasting. Sounds a bit scary. But, you know, for many of us, we just fit it into our lives. And actually, it has a positive impact on our hunger. And it does make us feel a bit more in control of our eating, which is a very positive thing. Um, so just to remind you, if you need snacks for whatever reason, they're suggesting almonds. So some nuts. Um, we're not really going to go for salted nuts because they're covered in salt. Um, so some naked nuts <laughs> um, and some berries, um, but you know, any fruit, preferably not tropical fruit because it's packed with sugar. So we're avoiding things like melons, um, pineapples, mangoes, that sort of stuff. I mean, they're very expensive this time of year anyway, but they're shipped across the world. That's up to you what you want to buy. But you want to get, if you, apples, hi Lorna, apples, pears, berries are perfect. All right. So those are just some ideas. Um, and make sure you're drinking enough. Now, I don't know, one of you was saying yesterday that you were hungry. Um, you need to be reviewing what protein you're having at meals because that is the element that fills you up. It's not the carbs, it's the protein, okay? Are you eating enough protein, enough meat or fish or tofu, beans, you know, all that? Are you getting enough along with your lovely portion of vegetables? And I do just want to remind you, um, in nursing we have lots of very quaint um, little uh, phrases for things, bowel habit, between us, it's poo. It's gonna be different, your poo's gonna be different if you're eating differently. So just take that on board, okay? Um, right, I'm gonna leave you now because I am teaching legs, bumps and toms intervals at 7.30 and I need to get my, my trainers on. Um, drop us um, any messages, any questions on this thread about timings of food, snacks, or any other questions you've got. And if you are trying intermittent fasting or just no breakfast, early lunch, then let us know and let us know how you got on. Um, tomorrow is day five, I know. Uh, so it's our last kind of formal day tomorrow. Um, and what I'll do over the weekend, we'll have our, we'll do a, I won't do lives over the weekend because actually I've got a study day on Saturday, nine till 4.30, lucky me. Uh, so I won't be doing a live at quarter past seven, but we'll do a sort of a roundup in the evening and I'll do a live on Sunday evening. All right. So have a fantastic Thursday, a fantastic day four of clean eating. Let us know how you're feeling. It might have been imaginary, but my jeans just felt a little bit looser yesterday. It might well be that they needed a wash and they just expanded with me, but I'm definitely feeling less bloated and I'm feeling proud of myself. I hope you are too. Let us know how you're feeling. See you soon. Bye.